Hi, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be showing you how to connect your Zoll monitor with your Vitals Bridge 300. Before beginning this video, I downloaded the Vitals Bridge connector software from vitalsbridge.com to my laptop. If you prefer to use an Android device or tablet, you're welcome to download the Vitals Bridge connector on the Google Play Store. When your Vitals, when your once your software has been downloaded, you can connect your Vitals Bridge to your software via a USB cable, which is what I'm doing today, via an Ethernet cable, or you can or you can connect via Bluetooth. That's just configured on your laptop or your device, the way a normal Bluetooth device would be configured. Also, before beginning today, I connected my Vitals Bridge carbon dioxide. You can use any carbon dioxide source, but I'm going to be using the Vitals Bridge cartridge. And you connect that to your Vitals Bridge by twisting in this blue tube to the spot that says CO2 in and setting your pressure to be between 20, 15 and 20 PSI. You'll notice how on my Vitals Bridge connector software, I've already have some preset settings so that we can test things as we go. The first vital sign we're going to be connecting today is the side stream capnometry. Vitals Bridge also supports mainstream, but since side stream is what our Zoll monitor uses, that's what I'm going to be showing you how to connect. With your Vitals Bridge, you should have received a cable that looks something like this. It has an orange end and it has a little white lure on the other end. You're going to take this orange end and you're going to connect it into the spot that says CO2 on your Zoll monitor. You just twist it in till it's secure and then you take this white end and you'll connect that to the spot on your vitals bridge that says CO2 out. Once you have that connected, your Zoll monitor is going to take a moment to initialize and then you should get a CO2 waveform down here in this purple section. So we'll just give that a minute and you can see we have a lovely CO2 waveform. You'll notice how the number that you're reading for CO2 level is slightly different than what I have set in my Vitals Bridge Connector software. That's really easy to fix. It's just a calibration issue. And to fix that, you'll come over here to the Configuration tab and you'll start a new CO2 calibration. And I'm not gonna show you that today because it just takes a little time, but there are some videos online and you can always look at the Vitals Bridge instruction manual, which can be found on vitalsbridge.com downloads. The next thing we're going to be connecting is our SPO2 probe. With your Zoll monitor, you should have received a cable that connects directly to your monitor, as well as a finger probe. The cable that connects to your monitor is going to connect right here where it says SPO2. So we'll plug that in there. And then I like to just make sure that it's going to fit on my, that it's going to work on my fingers so that if there are any problems, we know whether they're coming from the Vitals Bridge or the monitor. So I'll put the finger probe on my finger. And in a minute, I should have an, an SpO2 waveform as well as an SpO2 heart rate and saturation curve. It's searching, it'll take just a minute, and we have a heart rate, and we have an SpO2, and if you want to see the curve, you can just change your settings on the side here to see that SpO2 curve. We're watching the carbon dioxide curve instead. Um, so we'll take, we'll set this aside for a moment, and then we're gonna pull out the oximeter adapter that you received with your Vitals Bridge. It should have this small gray box, as well as a cable that has two identical ends. They're gonna take one of these ends and plug it into the spot on your Vitals Bridge that says SPO2, it's right there on your Vitals Bridge, and then you're gonna take the other end and plug it in on your gray box where it says SPO2 port Vitals Bridge. Once you have those both connected, you'll take that finger probe that we already tested on our finger, and you're gonna slide it in over this little white finger inside your adapter box. Secure it and then allow the Zoll monitor to initialize and define that SpO2 reading.
And there we go, we've got our heart rate as well as our SpO2 saturation content. Now, just to make sure everything's working perfectly with that SpO2, I'm going to take the heart rate down to 60 so that you can see. And that heart rate is going to drop here on our Zoll monitor. You can also adjust the SpO2 reading similarly, and you can adjust your uh, carbon dioxide readings as well, all through the connector software. All right, we're gonna just set this back to a healthy heart rate of 80. Now that we know everything's working, I will move on to the next step. The next thing we're going to connect is our ECG cable. So your ECG for your Zoll monitor should look something like this. It's going to have one end that connects to your monitor, and then it is going to have four leads that are color coded. And we're gonna take this end here and it's gonna plug in to right where you see the ECG on your monitor. Once that's plugged in nice and tight, we can take these four leads and we'll just match the colors to the colors right here on your vitals bridge. And they also have letters that should match the letters on your leads as well. So we'll plug in the green one here, the red one here, the white one here, and the black one here. And give it just a second and we can see a beautiful ECG waveform appearing on our Zoll monitor. Just to make sure everything's working really well there, we're gonna take our waveform and make it astal, and you'll see that we get a really nice flat line. So we can change that back to the normal sinus, and you know your ECG's working. You'll also notice that the ECG heart rate and the heart rate that you've set for your SpO2 should be the same heart rate. And that's because everything is, is just compatible on our Vitals Bridge software. Next, we're gonna connect our temperature cables. So the Vitals Bridge 300 is compatible with two temperatures and our Zoll monitor also takes two temperature readings. So we're going to be connecting both of those temperatures today. Both of the temperature cables that you received with your Vitals Bridge should look something like this. You've got a white cable on one end and then you've got a little blue cable on the other end. This end is gonna to connect to your monitor and this end is gonna to connect to your vitals bridge. So we'll take the side of the Zoll monitor. On this side here, we have our temperatures and we're gonna plug in temperature one to the spot that says T1 and then we're gonna take that same T1 and we're gonna plug it in to the spot on your vitals bridge that says T1. Then we'll do the same thing with temperature two We'll plug in temperature two right below temperature one on our monitor. And then we'll plug in the white cable to the spot that says T2 on our vitals bridge. And you'll see how we start to have temperature readings down here in the bottom. And your temperature reading should be calibrated to your monitor before you receive your vitals bridge. Next, we're gonna work on our non-invasive blood pressure. So with your vitals bridge, you should have received a little baggie that looks like this, and it has a variety of different fittings and tubing systems. Since the Zoll monitor uses a two-tube non-invasive blood pressure system, I'm, I configured before this video my Y adapter to have this, the right fittings that'll fit into my non-invasive blood pressure tube for my monitor and then it has this on the other end that should come pre-attached. So what we'll do is we'll take our two ends of our non-invasive blood pressure cable and we'll connect them on these pre-configured adapters. Then we'll take the other end, the long end of the Y, and we'll connect it into the non-invasive blood pressure reading here. It says NBP on your vital bridge. Then the other end of this cable is going to connect to the spot that says NBP on your Zoll monitor. You'll just twist that in and make sure it gets nice and secure. 
And once that's in, your non-invasive blood pressure is set up. We'll perform a reading by pushing this button here and it'll take a minute to run and you should hear some clicking from your vitals bridge. Um, make sure the tubing isn't too twisted up and then you'll see a reading there. While we wait for that reading, we are going to grab our invasive blood pressure. So your invasive blood pressure cables should look like this. They should have one end that has a circle of five pins and then on the other end, something similar to what you had for your um, your temperature readings. So we'll take this piece and we're gonna connect it into the spot over here. That's a, these P1, P2, P3. Now the Vitals Bridge does support ABP, CVP, and PAP, but we're only gonna be using ABP and PAP on this tutorial. So we'll plug in this cable here and we'll plug into pressure one and then we'll plug that into the AVP. And then we'll take the second cable and we'll plug that into pressure two. And that will go into the PAP section. Now, if we take a look at our monitor, we, you notice that we, are, we received our non-invasive blood pressure reading. And we also now have two waveforms for our invasive blood pressure readings. With our non-invasive blood pressure, if you don't get a reading that you like, you can always just rerun it and it should automatically reset to something that might be a little more in line with what you plugged in on your configuration. So we haven't quite finished with the invasive blood pressure yet though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to our software and we're going to zero our invasive blood pressures on the software. This is gonna cause these to have a flat line and it'll allow us to zero these so that we can get a more accurate invasive blood pressure reading. So you'll come in here to your IBP and there's these little buttons that allow you to zero. So you'll zero your pressure one and your pressure two and since we don't have anything connected for pressure three, we don't need to worry about zeroing that. Once these lines go smooth and flat right along the bottom, you know you're ready to unzero from your Vitals Bridge software. So you'll uncheck those boxes and you should get accurate and nice readings on your Zoll monitor. So that's how you've connected all of your vital signs. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is how to run your Vitals Bridge via a Laridol simulation. So I already have a simulation running on my computer via Laridol Leap software. So I'll come over here to the simulator tab of my Vitals Bridge connector software and my simulator should show up right there. And there it does, it's the laptop simulator. So I'll select the laptop simulator and connect. And you'll notice how now every vital sign that I had set on my, on my Leap software is now connected to the Vitals Bridge software. So you can come, then come into your Leap software and you'll be able to control your Vitals Bridge via the Leap software. Now something you do have to know is down here you have these little check boxes where you check to say yes, CO2 is connected, yes, PAP, yes, AVP, and you'll want to check all of these boxes to make sure that your vital signs are actually going to show on your monitor. But once you have all those boxes checked, then all of your vital signs should show on your Zoll monitor. It'll take just a minute to return back on. But you can come back to your Vitals Bridge Connector software and make sure that the vital signs match. You see the CO2 is started up again. We're just waiting for the, the invasive blood pressures. But you can then, you can change, once, once those show up, it'll take just a minute, but they will show up and you can then change anything you want from the Leap software and it'll correlate directly to your Vitals Bridge. So that's the tutorial of how to connect the Vitals Bridge 300 to the Zoll monitor. Good luck.